Hi, I'm Tyler London, Chief Analyst of Cabot Small Cap Confidential and Cabot Early Opportunities, and I'm here with your Cabot Weekly Review. It is Friday, November 17th uh, at about 12, 12 o'clock a.m. Eastern Time, almost 11.50, call it. All right, so as you can see here on the day, we have the chart of the S&P 500. We're about flat. Um, I mean, honestly, nothing to complain about this week. All the major market indices are on track for their third straight week of weekly gains. Obviously, S&P 500 here, we're about 107 points, 102 points, I guess, uh, from the high on the year, which was 4607 on July 27th. So about 100 more points to the upside to go here to challenge that. We'll see how that goes. Um, moving on to small caps, kind of a messy chart. It's the default settings here. I can't get rid of these lines, but uh, the black line is the 200-day moving average line. The red line is the 50-day moving average line. Uh, but really, I want to look at the candlesticks here, so these blue and red sticks. Um, of course, we had the CPI print early in the week. Small caps were up 5.5% the next day. I've written about this some over the last week and even previous to that. Uh, but bottom line, you know, small caps cheap on a valuation perspective relative not only to their own historical valuations but definitely relative to large caps a um, few things still need to fall into place for small caps to you know really get going um, but they tend to lead in three out of every five year period um, but they're down over the last two years uh, they're back to where they were you know in 2020 i think um, but it's just, it's been kind of a slog for the small cap index, which of course has a lot of exposure to financials. And I think this little bit of a relief rally early in the week, um, just kind of illustrates how, if we can get, you know, some more pullback in interest rates, um, and the economy, you know, starts to be, uh, a little bit more, I guess, consistent, uh, then we could we could see small caps really take off. Um, so kind of an interesting setup. I'm not going to go into the weeds on it, but I uh, just wanted to call that out. Um, of course, the story for the week has really been this increase in risk tolerance, risk on investments, uh, whatever you want to call it, um, all kind of tying back to the easing in interest rates. This here is the chart of the uh, the yield on the 10-year Treasury note, which, as you can see, topped out at just around 5% uh, in in October, late October, and now down to around 4, uh, 4.47, 4.465, if you want to be more precise. Um, but, of course, there was this dip, uh, about a 4.1% 4 4 decline uh, after that CPI rate reading early in the week. So we're kind of hovering around 4.5. We'll see what happens there. Um, feels like four, three to five, four, three to four, seven, maybe is the comfort zone until we find out what happens in December when the Fed is up next. Um, of course, the story behind the interest rate move is this continuation of the inflation data showing inflation coming down, soft landing expectations, more talk of maybe peak Fed, um, in terms of some of the buying out in the market this week, there's been a lot of discussion about corporate buybacks picking up some seasonality that's favorable, and then also some fund positioning dynamics, which gets a little technical. But um, for those of you that like that kind of talk, Goldman Sachs was out this week pointing out that uh, CTAs, which are uh, commodity trading advisors, bought nearly $70 billion worth of U.S. equities in the past 10 days. Um, if you don't know what that means, the takeaway is just that's the biggest largest amount of buying that that desk has ever seen on record. So uh, that is kind of interesting. And then, of course, the earnings story, S&P 500, S&P 600 earnings have sort of the, the earnings growth rate, the EPS growth rate has has been coming down. That's starting to turn around now and potentially going back up. And uh, the market always likes that margin expansion story. Um, there's always a counter argument, of course. And I think, you know, right now, the counter argument to all this bullish you know, feeling over the last couple of weeks is we have seen time and time again that getting too cozy with the idea that the Fed is done hiking 
and is going to pivot and start to cut rates. It, you know, the market has thought that I think six times during this tightening cycle and every time it's been wrong, this time does feel different. Those are dangerous words, of course, but, um, you know, supported by data and of course what the fed members are saying, uh, it's not, it's not far out to think that the fed is done. Um, Mark is starting to price in that there's not going to be a December rate hike uh, and that there are going to be cuts, two cuts by July. We'll see what happens. Um, would like to believe that. Of course, I think that is the consensus, but um, kind of looking for a little bit more evidence that that's going to be the case before getting too wildly bullish. Because, of course, anything can happen with inflation. Um, just want to see it keep coming down. Uh, and one of the interesting stories that's going to start to develop is where do we see um, disinflation uh, or deflation start to cut into profit margins? We heard some of that uh, this week from big retailers like Walmart. Uh, so that story is going to be out there and it's going to be, you know, a little bit different depending on who the who the company is uh, and what markets they play in. But um, just I think we're going to be hearing more about that moving into 2024. All right. That is enough of that. Let's move on to individual stocks. So um, what I did for today, I, I just ran a screen. I think we can all agree that it just there's something simple and beautiful about looking at stocks that just have nice, uh, nice sustained uptrends, beautiful charts. That's kind of the theme today, small caps uh, with beautiful charts. Of course, as always, these aren't like recommend recommendations to go out and buy these stocks. Uh, their ideas, and if you're going to you know, take action, obviously that's on you, and do your own research. Um, but we have six names to get through, so let's start off with Appfolio. Um, market cap uh, is $7.2 billion, ticker symbol is APPF. As you can see, the chart kind of speaks for itself. Somewhat like a pattern of higher highs, higher lows, App, Appfolio did top out at about 200 a few times over the last few months, and that's about where it is now. So might take a little bit to to you know get above that um but so far so good with this with this one in terms of what they do um they have a cloud-based so software platform uh and some data analytics solutions for the real estate industry two of their products are aimed specifically at property managers and investment managers um of course just you know, kind of streamlining their operations for dealing with managing properties and for real estate investment companies. Um, they also have some, they call them value plus services, which cover like really specific things like tenant screening and utility management. I'm not going to get into the fundamentals and the growth rates and all that. Um, but you can pause the video if you want and, and come down here at the bottom and take a look at uh, earnings, which is the top line over the last couple of quarters and then sales uh, or revenue, which is the second line. And if you want to geek out a little bit, then the after-tax margin is that third line right there. But again, it's probably easier for you to do that on your own uh, and pause the video. Otherwise, it'll take too long. Um, all right, next up is Carpenter Technology. Ticker symbol here is CRS, market cap of almost $3.4 billion. Um, company makes and distributes specialty metals like titanium. Uh, a lot of companies have been looking for other sources ever since the issues with uh, Russia and the invasion into Ukraine, um, trying to find other sources uh, besides Russian metal suppliers. Uh, these types of materials are used in aerospace, of course, defense, and also medical markets. And in a lot of cases, demand is exceeding supply. Um, also, we have this kind of electrification theme out there where you know the world is trying to go electric on just about everything. All of this is driving demand for Carpenter. Uh, kind of an interesting story. I reviewed a little bit of the last earnings call. Um, you can pull up that transcript if you can get your hands on that or just go to their investor relations site and listen to it. But kind of an interesting story. Uh, and the stock obviously uh, looks pretty good. All right. Consolidated Water, CWCO. Uh, company has a market cap of $540 million. Uh, ticker symbol, as I just said, CWCO. And they build and operate seawater desalination plants and water distribution systems. They're based uh, in the Cayman Islands, so a lot of their work is in the Caymans, in the Bahamas, in the British Virgin Islands. We were in the Bahamas uh, last winter, 
And the place we were uh, didn't have a system from consolidated water, but I did talk to somebody and kind of walked around this, this little plant. Uh, and it was just kind of interesting to think about how these islands just are so reliant on desalination technology to get their water, um, which tasted pretty good. Um, uh, so anyway, consolidated water, again, chart kind of speaks for itself. Next up here is Dactronics. D-A-K-T is the ticker symbol, market cap of 517 million, and they make uh, electronic scoreboards and then also programmable displays, large screen videos. Uh, so their markets, you're gonna see these at like large sporting complexes, uh, schools, governments, cruise ships, shopping retailers, uh, shopping centers, retailers, restaurants. Um, just kind of interesting uh, the scale <laughs> and the size of some of these pieces of equipment when you like go to your next like high school football game or, or whatever or a quick service restaurant just look at the size of some of these um, display boards and it's 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 pretty impressive um, anyway that's Dactronics again chart speaks for itself last but not least is defense company Kratos uh, or Kratos yeah, Kratos, uh, ticker symbol KTOS, market cap of 2.4 billion. Uh, so like I said, defense company, um, they make things that are difficult to explain, uh, but satellite communications, rocket support solutions, microwave electronics, I'm not gonna go any deeper than that. Um, but earnings growth and revenue growth, as you can see down here, have been pretty solid. Again, pause the video to take a closer look at that. And of course, the backdrop for defense companies right now is is pretty encouraging from a business perspective. Um, and uh, anyway, yeah, so we'll stop right there. Of course, next week is Thanksgiving on, uh, and Cabot is going to be closed both on Thursday and on Friday for the holiday. So we hope that you have a nice holiday and are able to spend time with friends and family and we will be back in touch the week after next all right take care everybody